What's up guys? We're here in Brussels and in this video we're going to show you the best things to do here. So I used to live and study in this city for about a year and also my hometown is only a 20 minute drive from here. So I explore Brussels actually quite a lot. So we hope you enjoy this video. We are Zach and Ina, full-time digital nomads from the United States and Belgium. We met while studying abroad in 2018 and have been traveling the world together ever since. We're here to inspire your next adventure, whether it's hiking in the Canadian Rockies, a road trip through the US, or backpacking across Africa. On our channel, you'll find unfiltered videos of hiking guides and the best things to do in destinations around the world. Located in the heart of Belgium, Brussels is the capital and largest city in the country. Not only is it the administrative, commercial, and financial hub, it's also considered the capital of Europe. This is because the headquarters of the European Union can be found here. The city itself is bilingual, which means that both Flemish and French are widely spoken here. And although Brussels may not have the star tourist attractions of other Belgian towns, the capital has many things to do to keep travelers occupied for a couple of days. From world-class museums and art galleries, to wonderful remnants of old architecture. In this video, we highlight the 10 highlights in Brussels. Located right in the heart of Brussels, near the central train station, the main plaza known as Grand Place is probably the first place that you'll visit. The square is one of the best preserved in all of Europe, with unique architecture and rich gold decorations. Most buildings date back to the end of the 17th century and were former guild halls. Today, the square is also home to several restaurants and cafes, as well as the beautiful City Hall. Combine a visit to the square with the nearby Royal Galleries, where you can find chocolate shops and cafes, covered by a spectacular glass roof. Monica Peace might be one of the most famous landmarks in Brussels. The fountain sculpture of a little boy urinating can be traced back to the 15th century. However, little is known about its origins. It's 55.5 centimeters tall, which is a lot smaller than most people expect. During celebrations, events, and festivals, the statue is dressed up in a costume. A collection of the costumes can be seen at the museum, just down the road. What most people don't know is that there's also a female and a dog version of this statue hidden around the city. The Royal Palace is located in the Royal Quarter and known as the workplace of the Belgian King. The palace interior can only be visited from the end of July until the end of August. However, it's beautiful from the outside as well and makes for a great photo op. A ceremonial changing of the guards takes place here every day at about 2.30 p.m. But besides the palace, you can also visit the Brussels Park or the Koudenberg Palace archaeological site. Belgium is the land of fries, chocolate, and waffles. But in Brussels specifically, you should try the Brussels waffle, which is a crispy waffle sprinkled with icing sugar and often dressed with various toppings. There's actually no such thing as a Belgian waffle, because there are two distinctive types, the Brussels and the Liège waffle. However, you can find both types all around the city. But besides waffles, you should also try fries in Brussels. There are many great for tours around, but we recommend Frites Flagey or Maison Antoine. So we just stopped by Maison Antoine, and it's known to have some of the best fries in all of Brussels. And the sauce we got on top here is Andalus sauce. It's from Andasasas, the best sauce in all of Belgium. If Brussels is the only place you visit in Belgium, we highly recommend going on a day trip to Bruges and Ghent from there. Located an hour or more to the northwest of Brussels, these are Belgium's most beautiful cities in our opinion. You can book a day tour via the link in the description below, which includes a professional guide and transportation. But if you'd rather visit at your own pace, that's also possible. Both cities can be easily reached via train from Brussels. We have separate videos about Bruges and Ghent, so you can learn more about each city and things to do there.
Another thing you can't miss in Brussels is the saint Contenaire Park. This park was established in 1880. At its center is the beautiful Triumphal Arch, which connects two of Brussels' most interesting museums, the Royal Art and History Museum and the Belgian Army Museum. We're here in Jubel Park, and this is a very nice place to just relax, have a drink or have a picnic. But there's also this really beautiful monument right behind me. And this is actually a monument that was erected in honor of the Belgian independence. Belgian beers taste unique and are often referred to as the best beer in the world. This is thanks to a wide range of flavors, brands, brewing processes, and ingredients. Since the time of the first Trappist and Abbey beers brewed by monks, the country has had a solid heritage to build upon. In Brussels, you can find a wide selection of beers. We recommend going to the Delirium Cafe, which offers more than 2,000 beers from around the world. But you can also decide to go on a guided tasting tour during which you visit a few top bars while learning about the beers and the history. Book your guided tour via the link in the description below. As mentioned before, Brussels plays an important role in the EU, as it hosts the official seat of the European institutions. The Parliamentarium is the visitor center of the European Parliament, and can be visited for free. With an audio guide, you can walk around the interactive display while learning everything there is to know about the EU. From the initial path towards European cooperation, to how the European Parliament works, and what members of the European Parliament are doing to tackle Europe's biggest challenges. Book your free visit via the link in the description. Belgium doesn't have many hills, so views are often hard to find. Luckily, Brussels has a few. The Mont des Arts is a small hill with a lovely view of downtown Brussels and the City Hall Tower at its center. But this area is also more than that. It's the official art district, with some major museums and cultural institutions being only a short walk away. These include the Magritte Museum, the Museum of Musical Instruments, and the Bazaar Cultural Venue. Finally, a trip to Brussels isn't complete without a visit to the national icon, the Atomium. Built for the 1958 World Fair, this 102 meter high steel and aluminum structure represents a molecule of iron magnified 165 billion times. It was actually a reference to the progress and research in the field of science, matter, and nuclear energy in its peaceful use. Today, you can enter the building with a permanent exhibition on the history of the structure and an incredible panoramic view. Get your Skip the Line entry ticket via the link in the description. A visit to the Atomium can easily be combined with a nearby Mini Europe or a walk through the Lachen Park, where you can see the official royal family residence and beautiful monuments. And that's it for our video on Brussels, Belgium. There are also many other things to do in Brussels that we didn't mention. You can find videos about other Belgian cities in our full Belgium playlist. For more information, such as the best time to visit and to download the actual maps used in this video, check out our blog link in the description. We'll catch you on the next adventure. <laughs>